G'day folks. Well, I figured it was time to uh, get the Intel quad server going. This is Quad Xeon. Uh, they're one of the older ones. I think it's made in 03. And uh, yeah, this was donated to me by a guy in the UK by the name Mr. Spooks87, I believe. Uh, I'll post a link to his channel anyway. Uh, I've just been chatting with him on YouTube today and he's having another clean out so he's found a bunch of other server boards and things and RAM and all that sort of stuff including the uh, 5 drive array and the RAID controller for this board as well so I'm going to pick all that stuff up as well as a gigabit Ethernet switch and some other stuff so yeah it should come in quite handy well, at least complete this one anyway I mean there are other server boards there including a brand new one but they're not complete and it's just a bare board so I'm not going to worry about that stuff Whereas the complete one, I grabbed this, and uh, yeah, definitely need a decent switch for this house, and uh, I'll rerun all my Ethernet stuff. I'll borrow the crimping tool from work and just buy a roll of cable and connectors, and run everything properly instead of using just whatever random cables I find and little joiners and things. Uh, I'm sure I'm losing bandwidth between the house and the shed using multiple joined cables. So yeah. <laughs> um, Powering this thing up, not too sure. I think I just plug it in, push the power button, see what happens. I have to get a screen and everything out for it. But as you can see, the baseboard's pretty big, so I'm going to have to build a fairly decent chassis for this with the power supply and everything underneath. But all that is is just DC smoothing and storage, really. That's all DC. And uh, these power supplies should be hot swappable. There's only two, two out of three, but that's plenty. They're a Delta 600 watt power supply, each of them. Yeah, 600 watts. Pretty decent. So, uh, I guess I better put the cover on it. Or even then, I'll get it to boot to BIOS as it is. These things won't cook unless I put them under serious load. Plus, it's under the air conditioning, so I've got a lot of airflow coming down over this area anyway. Cold air. So, we'll boot it up as it is and see what happens. Okay, well, it's all set up now. Everything's connected as it should be. Um, status LED was, well, I believe that's what it is, it says stat on it, so I'm guessing status LED was red for a bit, but then I plugged in the second power supply and it came good, so we should be able to run with two. Um, yeah, well anyway, we've got power, SLP, research, UID, and NMI. I think we push the power button. Oh, that's working. Been blowing air over the CPUs as well. Yeah. Video, menu, anything. It's telling me it's alright. No video though. Oh, there we go. It's a little bit slow. <laughs> Four at two point oh yeah two gigahertz Xeon processor MP two gigahertz pretty cool Phoenix BIOS it's the other bits that get hot that I'm worried about. <laughs> This thing's doing a pretty good job of blowing air over the whole area. Yeah. No system disks or anything, so... Get a normal setup. See, I don't have the RAID controller for it yet, so that's the other thing I need to get. Yeah, I won't save anything. Mm. 
can feel a little bit of warmth coming through those fins. Not much yet though. There's some voltage regs and things down there. Oh no, sorry, that'd be inductors. Delta branded inductors. Yeah. OS not found. No shit, there's no drive plugged into it. Rammy sticks. Yeah. I should plug a hard drive into it, see what it does. I've got good airflow through there, so if I put the plastic ducting and everything on top of it, I should be able to uh, keep the chips cool enough to uh, maybe load an OS on it. I'm going to put Windows XP Pro on it. Apparently Pro supports multiple processors. But yeah, they're just warm. Lukewarm. There's a lot of cold air in here. I mean, we're right under the central air conditioning cassette and I've got that thing recirculating it in this area like a vortex, so pretty good. Yeah, power up, that's about it. Power down. Cool. He did say it works, and I won't doubt him. It works. This thing, it doesn't look like it's seen much use at all. I know the fan unit's brand new, and um, this, I don't know if it's had any use. It might just be an unused board set. He seems to have a lot of unused stuff around, so... I don't know, I'll ask. If it has been used, it's only lightly. Like, it's spotless. Really clean. Um, it doesn't look like it's ever been put together properly. There we go. A couple of drives makes it all better. First boot up was a failure because I had them both set to master. That doesn't exactly work. Uh, make sure that one's master and one's slave. Master, slave. Optical drive's always slave. I mean, uh, some, some circumstances you could make it master, but typically in a home PC, that sort of thing, you fix disc as your master disc and your optical or floppy disk drives are the slave drive. In this case it only has one IDE ribbon connector so I have to have them both on the one ribbon whereas normally you'd have a separate ribbon for your optical and other stuff and a separate ribbon for your hard drives. Or primary IDE and secondary IDE. But it is working. It didn't crack, a sh crack the shits when it got to set uh, inspecting computer hardware configuration. <laughs> That's a good sign. It doesn't mind being on a uh, server. It's kind of neat. I like the uh, red LED lighting in the fans too. I wonder if that's factory. I'd say so. It doesn't look like they've been opened. Yeah. From the factory with pimped out red LED lighting. Nice. But that's all working quite well. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM, I think. Or sorry, 12 gigabytes of RAM. It's a 2, 4, 6. Yeah, 6 and 6, 12. 12 1 gig modules plus a bit. 12.28 gigabytes. That's doing its job. It's just a random hard drive. I don't even know if this drive's any good, but it seems to be working. I'll uh, run a full flat, full format on it and see what it comes up with. It's only 80 gig, but it'll do for now. Well, XP Pro's up. The visuals and things are horrifically slow on this, though, using the onboard video. I'm going to have to throw that uh, GeForce card in there once I get all the uh, utilities installed. But as you can see, I've built a bit of a cubby house around it to get some airflow through the CPUs, which are barely breaking a sweat. The only thing is, part of the cubby house is my driver discs, so I'm going to have to recover them. There's one under there, and there's one on the other side, so... I'll rearrange a few things and uh, throw the drivers for the board on, assuming XP recognises them. And uh, yeah, I'll throw the video card in there. It's a uh, G4 6200 PCI, I think. Pretty sure that's what it was. Just something I found in one of the computers at work. It couldn't have come at a better time. Yeah, G4 6200 256 meg DDR2. Nice. There we go, that makes me happy. This is my first time playing with server equipment and it found the uh, GeForce card. 
on boot up anyway. Let's see about getting drivers to install on it. Uh, the driver disc that I put in there says that a lot of the drivers of Windows 2003, so I'm hoping I can just extract the files and let uh, XP pick and choose what bits it wants. That or I just get online and look them up anyway. I mean, it's got an Adaptec uh, SCSI controller, Intel onboard LAN driver, and there was a hot swap PCI card driver, and that's about it, so it should be pretty fine. Uh, utilities, what's it done? Oh, it's booted from the um, CD. Yeah, let's go back to DOS. Assuming anyone uses DOS. Go to Windows. Okay, so don't loot, don't leave the um, utilities disk in the CD ROM. It is bootable, apparently. Um, well, if you won't do Windows, which one of you resets? There we go. <laughs> yeah, just tried to boot off the utility disk and do a fresh install or something. It probably has its own basic OS on the disk. Wouldn't surprise me in the least. Contains server product information, technical documents, customer service, drivers, utilities, and links to online support. No, it doesn't have an OS in it. There is another disk here which does have some other utilities and things on it. Server software, that sort of thing. So, yeah, it's good that I got those with it. But, anyway, I'll uh, continue to play with it and see how far I get. It is slow. A lot of people said it'd be slow, and it is slow. It's probably only running off one processor at the moment but given time it'll probably uh, work a bit better once I get all the utilities and things in there and it'd be nice to see if Windows XP actually recognises four Xeon processors because that's the whole idea of it running four at once not just one or two okay well I installed the um, network drivers off this thing for Windows 2003 and it has worked so it didn't come up with any errors or other issues I'm guessing Windows 2003 and XP are very similar uh, 2003 might just be a multi CPU server based thing but it has uh, found it has come up with the default home page and everything which is good yep yeah, we're on the net good Cyclone Sandra oh that's what someone was talking about yeah. Oh, refresh rate. Come on. I don't have the video drivers installed yet. That's why I'm online. But I just realised I might have them on this stick. So we try a stick first when I find a USB port for it. Front panel USB. That has the uh, current NVIDIA. Um, Forceware package, I think it is, and someone was saying the uh, card that's in here is still has update drivers and things included in the uh, Forceware package. Yeah, so this thing still has to go through. Cancel. Yeah, it's already found the drive. I don't have to install the damn USB drive. Oh, the fun of setting up a computer for the first time, especially on foreign hardware or unusual hardware which is still running incredibly cool right, this thing's barely breaking a sweat it doesn't give a shit mind you put 20 office computers and a copy of Pronto on it and this thing would just be brought to its knees instantly it's too old to run that sort of thing although it's probably, it's probably better than the server we're using at work but we only have about 12 to 14 computers at any time and only a few of them are actually running Pronto so our servers are keeping up, but the ones we're throwing out are um, IBM, Pentium 4 and Xeon based servers, but probably older than this, like 99, 2000 Xeon stuff. Fairly old, but the guy, our IT guy said they'd make a mean file server for home, so I'm going to grab both of them, uh, wipe the drives and go from there. Okay, so it is working okay, it has found the card and everything, that's quite possible. But the limitation is going to be the operating system. See, it's only saying there's one CPU at 2 gigahertz, 
and it's only found 3.25 gig of RAM instead of all 12 gig, which is typical of XP. XP doesn't usually use more than four, or in this case, three, three and a quarter. So it does work. I've tried installing an OS on it, but the main thing I was curious about was whether or not it would recognize anything. Because a couple of people were saying that uh, XP does recognize multiple processes, but this one has not. So I'm going to leave it at this, uh, get some feedback from my viewers and things, and try and work out some better software to run on this, because I'd like to get it running at full capacity. It sort of explains why it's running so cool. Most of these CPUs aren't doing anything. I think only one of them up the back here, number one, will be doing something. So it does work. It's a nice little platform to work with, but I just want to get it up to full potential. So let me know what you think, guys and girls. Uh, thanks for watching.